Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. This week I wanted to do something a little bit different. Now, hear me out, hear me out. So many people go on on the daily about plants that are variegated that have white variegation. And I honestly believe yellow variegation is just, it's not hitting its mark. And I know people have explained why. So let's talk about it, why not? So a lot of people, and I've just filmed a Syngonium red plant index, so excuse the examples but of course here we have white variegation and here we have yellow variegation so a lot of people prefer the white some people say that they prefer the white over the yellow because they feel like the yellow variegates look a little bit more sick a lot of the time we associate yellowing leaves with you know bad plant health and stuff like that personally i'm gonna put it out there i think they're really underrated most of the time when we have yellow variegated plants they are usually the rare version of the white variegate of the you know the same plant for example yellow monstera white monstera now this is probably because the demand is low so you could argue it's artificial rarity either way they are still commercially very rare and therefore i'm going to pick them up because i think they're really underrated so with that in mind today i really want to show you five of my current favorite yellow variegates that i have because it can change these are the ones that i prefer at the minute there is one i'm not going to include i'll explain why at the end because Personally, I'm a fan. It's nice to say stuff you don't often say. So with that said, I'm going to start with the first plant that I have to show you, and that is the yellow variegated Syngonium. This is really beautiful. As I say, I've just filmed a Syngonium rare plant index that should be out last week, so it should be up if you want to go and view it. But this is what is known as yellow variegated Syngonium, Syngonium aurea, all of that jazz. I don't get why people don't love it. I just don't. I just think it's so underrated. And the great thing about this plant specifically is that it does grow just the same as the white variegated. So it's just as easy to look after. Sometimes, you know, certain plants are harder to look after than others. This one is arguably a little bit easier. With this one, yes, you do need more light to get them looking proper yellow. But what I'm saying is they can live in lower light. Generally, they can handle themselves a little bit better because this still has some chlorophyll in it. It's not the same as the white where the cells are just completely devoid of all chlorophyll, right? So they can live better. They will look better if you put them in a brighter spot, but they can tolerate lower light generally. And to be honest, you can say that about most yellow variegated plants. For me, I think that's absolutely gorgeous. And I just think it's nice to add a little pop of color, I know I say this all the time, but a little bit of a pop of color with your other stuff that is green, that is white, that is pink, that is silver, whatever, it's nice. It's really, really nice if you wanna build up something colorful. They are a little bit more on the affordable side, these ones. I should have really done this in order of price. Maybe I kind of can, I can kind of doctor this. We'll go through this video in order of price actually because that might influence your decision. These are probably, funny enough, on the joint lowest end of price. These are probably low trebles. They're a little bit more on the affordable side and they look really beautiful. They propagate the same, they're just as easy. So if you really think that you're good at dealing with the white version, this one, just the same. Honestly, it's just the same. It's just, oh, I might have to keep that one for myself and swap mine out. I do have my mother over there, but it's just not as hot as that one. I'm going to put it down because that's the first one that we are going to talk about. And we'll move on to the next one that is slightly higher in value, probably because it's more desirable than that. Um, I don't know why that hasn't took off, but this one is slightly more. I still think it's in the low trebles from experience, but it is a little bit more than that one. So I'll pick this next one up. It's weird because this plant was not popular. Was it a couple of years ago? I got one like very, very early on in my channel. It was one of the first variegated plants I think I had actually. They were great then and they're very, very easy. They don't love being shipped, but they're all right. But anyway, I had it. I got rid of it. I brought it to the shop. It actually lives here, but it's just a bit pathetic looking. Nobody really talked about these plants for a long time. You used to be able to get these at for like late double digits, quite easy. They've definitely gone up now. They've probably doubled roughly, maybe more, I don't know. This is the Philodendron Burley Marks Variegata, and it's very, very beautiful. Now, I don't know how to describe this leaf shape. It's not that Sagittate. It's not that arrow shape. It's kind of, 
I don't know, what shape would you describe it as? It's not like a long boy. It's kind of in between heart-shaped and a long boy, if you like that kind of thing. Very, very pretty though. Look at this. Can I just hold this up to the camera so you can really understand how nice that is? Now notice, sorry, I have to cover my face. That's not super, super yellow. That's more of a creamy yellow. And you can get variations on these plants where sometimes they do look really yellow. Sometimes they look more on the cream side. So you can get a really nice marbling effect over the whole plant and for that reason I really like them. They are very easy growers when they do grow. I mentioned this before, they don't ship amazingly. If they have large chunks of sectoral on them, they don't ship well. But honestly, no plants with large chunks of sectoral ship well if they are thin-leaved and these leaves are quite thin. That's just kind of a, a downside of, of these plants. But if I mean, if I were to ship this one out, I'm totally confident it would arrive exactly how I sent it because this isn't, it's not too much. If anything was going to go, it would be this, but it'd be fine. All the things I'm saying here, by the way, do apply to white variegation. I'm just kind of chatting about variegation generally, I would say. But really great plant. They don't half pop themselves. Honestly, they, they really do. Like if you want to buy a plant for investment, this is a very nice one. And I'm going to explain why. So this is one plant in here. Hopefully you can see up to the camera there. The growth points that are coming out on this thing are kind of insane. See, there's tons of them and you get good aerials because they are climbers. I think these are a great investment for that reason because they grow so well. You can chop them and you can water propagate these really well. They do handle lecker just fine, but you can definitely water propagate these. These are really nice for that. They are very water loving. That's why they are very thin in texture. They're not as meaty as some of the other stuff like Monstera, for example, that has a thicker texture, Monstera Deliciosa. These will need a bit more water or they're just more sensitive, I guess. That's probably why they don't ship as well. They're not as underrated as the Syngonium because people do tend to want these. These are on a few people's wish lists at the minute. And I suspect it's just because they're quite easy to look after. They don't really give you any problems. So they are on my favorites list, but again, they can present a little bit more cream. There's a new leaf coming out here. I don't know if it's gonna look cream or yellow. It kind of looks in between. You get varying results. Beautiful plant though. Really, really beautiful. Love that. Awesome. Let's put her down. This next plant looks quite ugly and that is because I've propagated it and the propagations are quite juvenile and this is essentially a pot with one leaf in it that is not juvenile. But I want to show you it because I want to show you what the leaf shape actually looks like because the juvenile one wouldn't have done you any favors. So. so that's basically why it looks ugly. But this here is the Philodendron Domesticum Variegata. And I'm going to do my best to just pull on this. As I say, it's been propped there is a little, you can't see it, there's a little shoot coming in here where my finger is. But this is what it looks like. It's really, really nice. And if you're into your triangular kind of shapes, this is very, very nice. It does climb from memory. Yes, it does. It's a climber. I think these have shot up in value and I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it's because they're not very easy to propagate, at least not for me. Now they grow quickly when they're happy. If they're not happy, they won't do anything and I, they won't even grow leggy. Now a lot of plants for me, they really differ. Like some plants, if you don't give them what they want and they're not happy, i.e. say they don't have enough light, they will just grow leggy. Pink princess. It's probably going to grow, for example, but it'll grow really not very nice. This does not grow, to be honest with you, if you don't give it the light that it wants. It really struggles. So I I think this is one way you do have to give it more light. Definitely to develop the variegation well, I think you need to do that as well. But it is very beautiful when it grows and it's very rewarding. I would argue that it's just a little bit more of a higher difficulty plant. But I don't see many people talk about this. It's not a super long boy, I guess. Wow, well, that is quite a long boy, isn't it? It's kind of in between. Again, it's a very triangular shape, so it's whether you love that or hate that. They seem, I don't want to say stable because they're not stable. They can revert. They seem to carry variegation well up the stem. Some plants do, some plants don't. In my experience, these aren't so bad. I love it and I want to show you it because of this shape. That is a really, really pretty shape and I don't see many people drawn on about these. I think they're underrated in their own way. I don't know why. I do think nurseries don't get these out very quickly because they are hard to propagate. I've had a lot of failures from this. I've had a lot of root rot, left, right and center. It has been a journey. I think I only have, is it two or three mothers of these and this classes as one of them. I think the last cutting I took was about three days ago and I didn't cut the whole plant down. I just lobbed the top off because I didn't want to kill it. So they are not the easiest to propagate. Maybe it's just my methods, but they're not. Looks wise, that is amazing. Let's just show you that right there next to my head. Beautiful 
beautiful plant. Again, it's yellow, but honestly, underrated. I'm telling you now, underrated. Hard to grow, but underrated all the same. Now then, moving higher up, I think it's got to be this one. This one is not going to surprise anybody at all. This is an extremely sought after plant. I don't know many people that aren't after it generally and the value has shot up tenfold. It's now pretty much mid trebles. I think um, if you're going to pay for one of these, it's going to set you back a little bit of money. This here is the gorgeous Philodendron Florida Beauty. The cool thing about this one, if you've never seen this plant before and you've been living in a cave, this is gorgeous because of the shape of the leaves. Let me put my hand behind it so you really are aware of how stunning that is. A lot of people love these plants for that. Not only is the leaf shape cool, but you get some variations in said leaf shape as well. Like for example, this leaf here is different in shape to this one here. I tell you what, I really like this and I don't know if everyone does, but I happen to think that when these plants are not seedling level of juvenile, but like mini plant level of juvenile, their leaves are so cute, honestly, because they come out like this and this one just happens to have grown in a darker spot, I think, but they turn into this really cute chubby little number here. So even if you get them from a small size, you can really enjoy these. Now that's what I love about this plant over, to be honest, nearly every plant in this list. This is a cool plant to watch grow because it changes shape so much when it matures. So you start off and you get like, it's hard to explain, like these kind of like bulbous shaped leaves when they're like super juvenile but very quickly you'll get to this really cutesy stage where they look like this and it's adorable and when they get more mature obviously you end up getting to this kind of stage and they just they're so beautiful now for me they don't propagate the best I've said this before on this channel, it's definitely one of the slightly more difficult ones. If you're going to propagate, you need aerials from experience. Just don't, just don't cut it if it doesn't have aerials, just you're wasting your time. I'm not saying it's impossible to propagate that way. I'm sure a lot of people have had great success cutting these things without aerials, but in my experience, they just don't like to root at all. They just hate me. They hate my soul. They hate everything I stand for. So I need a good aerial to prop. And even then, there might be a, a bit of a failure rate on these. So I suspect again that is why the value is high a lot of people seem to think that certain plants just get a high value on them because they're in demand right and you know everyone wants them and they're always hyped that's not always the case at all there are so many factors that contribute to how available a plant is it's not even funny for example if this plant has like an 80 percent failure rate there is no point a grower having tables upon tables of these in a nursery. They're taking a valuable retail space, so valuable space in the nursery where that nursery could be earning money. They can't because now they've got these plants that don't grow very quickly because they don't, by the way. Um, kind of sat there and their propagations fail all the time so they're not able to produce this plant so i wanted to get that out there it's a gorgeous plant and if you can get your hands on one please do because they are great and you don't have any problems with them if you get an established one they're absolutely fine i just i worry about cuttings a rooted cutting no problem if you're going to go for one of them not a problem just make sure it's got roots i would never ever ever buy one of these without roots. I don't think it's a good idea personally. Again, my opinion, my experience, I'm just telling you, I have about 30 odd of them down there. I would not buy one without roots. It's not like, you know, other plants where you can get a Monstera or a Hoya or something woodier that can take it. I don't think these can. Just putting out there. They're not that available and I believe it's due to these reasons. I believe they're not the easiest to propagate and I think that's why there aren't that many around. If you do want a more affordable option to one of these and you like white, there is the Philodendron Florida Ghost. If you don't know about it, I highly suggest you Google it. The leaves are more or less the same shape, but the leaf emerges like a minty cream slash white color, and then it fades to green over time. So you still get some funkiness with the leaf shape, but you don't have to pay these price tags. Also, you can get things like um, Philodendron Podatum that is just basically a green one of this. So if you're looking for leaf shape, great, but I wanted to put that out there because it's super, super popular. I just don't think people are giving this plant enough grace. I think it's a propagation issue. Anyway, that was my essay on Philodendron Florida Beauty. The last plant I have, it's kind of last plant, it's kind of second to last plant actually. Um, I might grab the one I'm talking about, that should give you a bit of a clue as to what I'm going to say. But the last favourite of mine that boasts yellow variegation has to be the yellow variegated Monstera or the Monstera Aurea. Now then, this one is quite sexy, it's very juvenile. That's one of my hairs, how did that even occur? <laughs> These leaves are going to come in more yellow and this is the newest leaf here. 
if I can kind of show you on camera without doing anything bad. They will become more like, where is it? These leaves on the bottom here. It's just, I should have said this in the beginning of the video and I am an idiot for not saying it, but the variegation on basically every plant I've shown you is, it behaves a bit like a Polaroid, like a Polaroid camera. When you take a picture on a Polaroid camera, it develops over time, right? It takes a little while to see the image on the Polaroid. Yellow variegation like this is very, very similar. If you don't give it enough light, it's probably not going to show fully yellow. It's going to stay a bit of a more greeny color and it's not going to go full, full pow, if you will. But it, even if you do give it light, it takes a little bit of time to develop. So if you have any of these yellow plants, and I should be saying this on the end of the video, but we're here now. If you have any of these plants and you want to take cuttings or you're worried about reversion, don't cut too early and don't throw the cuttings away because honestly, there might be hidden variegation in there. It's happened to me a lot and luckily I kept the cuttings. I've mentioned that on my channel before, but just be very careful because this might not look like it on camera, but I promise you that's got good variegation on that leaf. I think you can see it if I tilt it in a certain way. Just be very, very careful. So as per usual, this is a rarer version of the Monstera Albo and it is not a version that people gravitate towards. I think it's definitely coming into its own now. I think it's having its day a little bit more now than what it was. A little bit more about this plant and I'm now gonna fuse it with another plant. This is what a lot of people refer to as Monstera borzigiana aurea or Monstera borzigiana aurea or Monstera small form aurea. Normal forms of Monstera deliciosa, there are two forms, two known forms. I suspect there are three. It's not official or anything like that. I just, I have reasons to believe there are three. But anyway, this is what is considered the smaller form. I do have a yellow variegated large form and that is not common at all. You can't get them. They're I'm going to go out on a limb and say they're borderline unicorns. And I never say that word lightly on this channel. You know that. They're very, very different. And I want you to know that. You cannot tell them really at this stage. I guess the internodal on this is a lot longer. I'm now going to go grab my large form because it is also a baby. It's also juvenile. This here is my variegated large form. And you might be able to tell that the internodals on this one, can you see? The internodal spacing, by the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's basically the space between the nodes on the plant. I think, annoyingly enough, the prime place to show you is where this measuring thing is there. The space in between that, if it's focusing on it at all, is very, very short between these nodes. Now that contrasts a lot with the small form where there is much of a more gap between these nodes. Now, yes, light will play a factor in the spacing between the nodes as well. But you just have to trust me, I guess, when I say that this is large form and the other one is small form. That is kind of the names that it's going by. This Monstera is basically the Monstera that can have leaves like two or three feet across, like big boy leaves. This is one of the big boys. And by the way, I don't know if you can see this leaf, it's so exciting. Can you see how much yellow is on that? That is just, oh, it's so good. I'm going to put it down, then I'm going to pick the other one back up. That's large form. This is small form. This is much more easy to get. But honestly, if you have a space issue, this is your boy anyway, because they grow more vertically. These ones can grow on a pole. The other one cannot. There is no point sticking it on a pole. You are wasting your time. Same thing as a tire constellation. You are wasting your time if you put that thing on a pole. Um, I know people do, but I don't see why. These plants are the rare version of the white variegation. It's coming more into play now. It's having its day more now, but it's still nowhere near as popular as the white. I don't think that's ever going to change. I really don't. I think people are always just going to prefer white variegation for whatever their reasons. Now, apologies for rambling on a lot about Monstera there. There's kind of a lot to get through on the subject of Monstera generally in terms of the forms. And I know I've said this on videos before and I, there is a rumor going around now and I don't know why this is. There's a rumor going around now that it's just all the same plant and that there is no such thing as small form and large form. That's not true at all, at all. There is a huge, huge difference. They are 100% different plants. I'm going out on record on camera saying that they are different plants. So if you're wanting to buy one or the other, make sure you know what they are, whether that's a regular green form, whether that's yellow variegation, whether that's white variegation. Personally, I'm not just saying it because I own one. To get that out there, I do not see anybody selling a true yellow variegated large form or a true white variegated large form. A lot of the white large forms going round are just very, very, very mature small forms. They are not the big boys. If you want to make absolutely sure 
that you have a variegated large form, get a Monstera with a two foot leaf across. Just wait for it and pay the money for that because honestly, you don't know what you're getting. Otherwise, you might be paying a lot of money for a small form, which you might already have, I suspect. So be careful on that. Not meaning to lecture anybody, but that is just something I'm seeing on the internet a lot. A lot of small forms are being sold as large and that's okay if they're charging the same amount of money. Cool, fine, I guess. But just be very, very careful there and do your research because honestly, I don't know of a variegated white large form that is true large form. I do have one, and nobody knows this. I have a thing that is not Borzig and it's not large form just outside of this studio. It is genuinely, it looks like it's in between the two. I want to go on a limb and say that there is a third type. It's not on record yet, but I would not be surprised. I'm calling it now. I think in the next three years, we will hear of a third type in between the two. I've spoken to basically growers of Monstera that grow these things every single day in the thousands, and they have said the same thing. They have said, look, this one here, for example, is different. It is an intermediate type. So I do think of Eventually, that will be a thing. I think it's a long way off necessarily being identified and, you know, the difference is really shown, but I do think it is a thing. Anyway, that was my five favorite, uh, at least currently, yellow variegated plants. They don't get much press. They are more probably for collectors out there and I think that's just due to the fact that everyone prefers the white variegation. For me, I do like them both equally. I kind of chop and change between them. And it really it depends on the plan, right? Because I know for a fact that I love Monstera Albo, but I know that when my large form that's down here gets much bigger and becomes a real large form, I know for a fact that that's going to be the best thing that ever happened to me. And that's going to be my favorite. Ah, that ended up being a really, really chatty video. That wasn't necessarily the intention, but that's how it's come out. So... Thank you very much for watching this video. Let me know if you have any yellow variegated plants that you just think, you know, why on earth isn't everyone screaming for this? If you have any of those, then please list them down in the comments below because I really want to see what people think about this. Again, yellow is just not sexy for some reason and I don't get why, but I like it. So without further ado, please leave any comments you have down below. Please leave any other requests for any other videos that you may have for me down below as well. And I will see you next week. Bye.